Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to AMC Mailbag. This is your mailbag show where all we do is take your questions that you've emailed to us. Now, look, uh, before we go any further, I'm going to let you know if you've got a topic or a question, email them to us. And you can email them to us at not my Facebook page, not my Twitter page. You can email your questions to AMC Movie Talk at gmail.com. My name is John Campy. I'm the editor in chief of AMC Movie News and the host of uh, you know our regular AMC Movie Talk during the week. But we get so many email bags, uh, email questions from you guys that we decided to start a mailbag show on the weekends just to take mailbag questions. So I got a couple of people here with me today. They're going to answer your questions with me. First of all, she's one of the hosts of AMC Movie Talk. She's Miss Erin Darling. How you doing, Erin? I'm doing fantastic. How are you today, John? Very, very good. Thank you so much. And also joining us today, he's the one, the only, the director of the upcoming The Death of Superman Lives. What happened? Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, how you doing? Hey, what's up, everybody? You're going to die someday. How's it going? You're going to die someday. What an ominous greeting. So (laughs) profound. So absolutely (laughs) profound. All right, so let's uh, let's not waste any time. We'll get into the first question. And our first question today comes to us from Michael Woods, who writes, Hello, guys. All of you are awesome, and I love the show. Well, thank you so much, Michael. I was wondering why you guys haven't talked about the Bad Grandpa trailer. Uh, the trailer is tear-jerkingly hilarious, and I would love to know your thoughts on it. Uh, well, Michael, first of all, never, ever question me. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, no, it's been an oversight. It's been an oversight actually talking about the trailer. Uh, Schnepp, have you had a chance to see this trailer yet? I've watched it about six times. It's so hilarious. Uh, I, I can't wait for it to come out. It's <laughs> it, it just seeing it makes me smile. And I cannot wait to see it a hundred times. Aaron, have you seen it yet? I have seen it and I'm not very impressed. I'm not a huge fan of Jackass or really Johnny Knoxville that much. Um, although he was pretty funny in The Last Stand. But I just have to say I'm not stoked about this trailer or this movie. Although it could surprise me when I go see it. I wouldn't outrule it, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, putting it on the top of my list. I got to tell you, I am not a Jackass fan at all. And then that Jackass 3D movie came. And that was the last one, right? Jackass 3? Yes. Mm-hmm. That killed me. That Jackass killed me. Like the other two, I didn't find funny. I didn't find excited. I didn't find interesting. Not at all. But Jackass 3, I don't know why. It just, it slayed me. Completely slayed me. I loved it so much. I just, I, I could watch that like once a month. I don't know why. I found it hilarious. And you know, when I first heard about this grandpa film, Bad Grandpa, I thought, I don't want to watch a movie that's just... All jackass stunts, but just done with the grandpa. And then when I saw the trailer, I was like, this is more of a Borat style yeah. movie than a jackass style movie, really. And yeah. I'm telling you, that one clip in the trailer, when the kid's talking to the woman, is like, what's your stripper name? Yeah. And she cinnamon. goes, you think I'm a stripper? And yeah. he's like, I'll just call you Cinnamon or whatever he <laughs> yeah. calls her. Like, I, I just thought it, it looked... It's funny. It's a funny trailer. I mean, to me, it's a funny trailer. So while there's a part of me that thinks it's going to really suck, I, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to give it a chance before, but now I'm going to give it a chance. Like, was there anything in that era that made you think, ah, oh, maybe I'll give this a shot, or did it really just not appeal to you no, that much? No, there's a part of me that thinks this is going to suck, and that part of me is my brain. <laughs> well, all I have to or say Or my about whole that, soul, maybe. I, I just don't think it looks good. There's always, there's always one movie uh, out of the jackass movies or an episode that will turn you and it was like i remember when i first saw clips of jackass was like they were like vomiting eggs on each other and i was like i'm not gonna watch this and i don't remember which episode it was that made me start laughing out loud and then i was a convert so aaron you prepare to get converted and be stoked is all i could say i'm always willing to go the dark side but this is kind of a stretch for me so i'll keep an open mind but that being said i'm not stoked for it all right well having an open mind is all we can do let's move on to the next question and the next question comes to us from frank foster and frank writes hey guys love the show i just wanted to know your thoughts on Ellen DeGeneres as the host for the 2014 Oscars. I want to know your thoughts of Ellen DeGeneres as the host for the 2014 Oscars. I had a little conversation today with Aaron Darling about this. 
Um, and it started today with this. I got a tweet this morning. And uh, forgive me, I, I can't remember who it was that tweeted to me. They said, John, prepare to go into absolute murderous rage when you read the news this morning. And I'm like, oh my gosh, now what? Something about Batman? I, I don't know. They they cast Pauly Shore as Batman or, yeah, I, I, I don't know, like what they were going to do. So, and I go hesitantly to my news feeds and I start to look at it. And what do I see? Ellen DeGeneres is being brought back to host the next Oscars. Now... To give you a little background of information, I, without exaggeration at all, the Oscars are my second favorite day of the year. There's Christmas, there's the Oscars, and then there's my birthday. <laughs> um, and it's Wait, in that order. Oscars and, before your birthday? I, yeah, it, the Oscars <laughs> come before my birthday, believe it or not. So that's how important the Oscars have always been to me. I, I I mean, and every year I throw an Oscar party. I I love the Oscars because I've grown up with the mo movies being my ultimate, uh, you know, my drug. That's what my drug has always been is the movies. And so the the big day, the biggest day on the movie calendar, celebrating the year that was in movies. That's always been my big thing. And when Ellen DeGeneres hosted the Oscars before, um, somewhere, a baby angel died. Um, Ellen DeGeneres is the worst host in the history of the Oscars. Now, you may be a fan of Ellen's, uh, of her stand-up comedy or her talk show. I don't watch her show, but I've seen a few clips because somebody say, hey, when she had so-and-so as a guest, it was really funny. And I watch and hey, you know, I'll, I'll give credit where it's due. She's pretty good hosting her own talk show. But she is the worst host in the history of the Oscars. I would take James Franco and Anne Hathaway. I would take that debacle again before taking Ellen DeGeneres again. This is a monumental collapse in judgment on the behalf of the producers of the Oscars. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm at a lack for words. I'm at a lack for words. I, this is so monumentally stupid and moronic. And basically, I'll say it, Oscar producers, you're idiots. You're absolute idiots. Thank you for ruining my second favorite day of the year. And I put this on my Facebook page, and I'm not kidding. This will be the first Oscars in my lifetime that I remember, because you know I can't remember when I was two, but this will be the first Oscars in my lifetime that I do not watch. I'm telling you right now, I am not going to be watching the Oscars this year, because they chose, not made a mistake, they chose to bring back the worst host in Oscar history. And so, uh, like, and I know there are going to be fans of Ellen who jumped to her defense. Look, that's great that you love her in whatever context she's in. I'm not speaking ill of her in any other way. But for when it comes to hosting the Oscars, nobody has ever done a worse job. And the fact that they're bringing back, I'm... I'm, can you tell? I'm very upset about this. I've taken this very personally. I can tell. Aaron... I, I can see you're a little upset. <laughs> yeah. Little Aaron, what do you think? Yeah. You know what? I I would beg to differ. I don't think she's the worst thing that's ever happened to the Oscars because in 1989, there was no host. <laughs> if you guys remember, but there was an opening number with Rob Lowe and Snow White. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. That was the worst thing to happen to the All Oscars. Right. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, I, I like her. I think she's funny. I think she's smart and she's great off the top of her head. Not only that, but she'll have writers. There's going to be people that help her. And I really don't think that she is the worst thing. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Oh, oh are you going to hate me for saying that? <laughs> Snap. Way in here. All I can say is. I am not evil. <laughs> not hate me when I come and eat your children on Oscar night. <laughs> you know what? I didn't. I, I'm not a big. You know, I talked to John about this. I'm not the biggest Oscar fan. So, like, I, I got a recap from him with the whole Seth MacFarlane thing, and I'm like, eh. I, so I watched the James James Franco Anne Hathaway uh, horror bomb, whatever that thing was. I remember watching that? So. I'm I'm in the middle somewhere. I like I might tune in and watch some of it, and and if it's funny or not, I don't know. But uh, you know, I feel I'm sorry that you're so upset about it, John. Because for someone who really loves the Oscars, I, I hate to hear that you know your night's ruined. But in the same <laughs> breath, I liked Finding Nemo, 
So yeah, hey, look, and that's the thing. I love yeah. her doing the voice in Finding Nemo, yeah. and looking forward to her coming back for the sequel, Finding Dora. I am I so I. I don't want people to misinterpret my absolute disgust over this decision as an overall. Uh, you know, conviction of the totality of the personhood of Ellen DeGeneres. Not at all. Uh, I, but just in this one... Con- Look, I would have been equally upset if they announced that I was hosting the Oscars. <laughs> like, are you freaking idiots? I am going to ruin this thing, and I would be just as upset. But clearly, I think I'm a pretty good guy other than that. Um, and like I said, th- this is not a commentary on anything else to do with Ellen DeGeneres. Just, I hated and detested the job she did on the Oscars. So. Did she? I'm sorry, I didn't see the last time she did the Oscars. Did she make everybody dance? Like get Jack Nicholson to dance with Halle Berry? Oh or, my god! Did that happen? She did this thing where, if, if I'm remembering it right, like she went out into the crowd. Like it's almost like my mind is blocking it out, like like a being abused as a child or something. Uh-huh. But <laughs> like she went to the audience with a vacuum cleaner and was. I don't know, knuck and elbows with Clint Eastwood. It's, it's just so bad. And her comedic timing was so bad. And everything about it was painful. So, uh, uh, yeah, and, anyway. I make it up. You know, maybe yeah, she's going to rock and roll. I feel like the things that you're listing right now, John, are things that could be ameliorated. And I think there's fixes to those problems. I don't think that she might always be that bad. You know what would have been <laughs> another fix to the problem? Getting somebody else. That well, would have fixed well, the problem, yes. too. <laughs> All right, let's jump on down to the next question. The next question, our third question of the day, comes to us from Kevin Jang. And Kevin Jang writes, Hey, guys, obsessed with the show. Enough said. Okay. Because there really isn't much solid information to base anything around, people will speculate just about anything about Man of Steel. I think that's good. It's getting the publicity that it needs since I loved Man of Steel. Here's the question. Many are convinced, understandably, because Goyer said so himself, that the movie is going to be called Batman vs. Superman, or Superman vs. Batman. If this is the case, does this title do justice for the... (laughs) Do justice, get it? Does this title do justice for the 2015 blockbuster, or would you rather it have a cooler name? So, Aaron, let's start with you on this. What do you think about the name? Should they go with Batman vs. Superman or Superman vs. Batman, or would you want to see some other kind of title? No, this is so lazy. And you know what? This is the second installment of Man of Steel, and I feel like they could really develop that story a little bit further. And I think they're jumping the gun. We don't need Batman and Superman yet. I feel like that would be the third installment, or maybe the fourth, or maybe a standalone movie. And I really don't like this idea. I know that a lot of people are so excited, and Comic-Con was like the biggest announcement, but I think that they're really, really rushing this. I'm worried about that movie. I don't like the title. I think that it's... It's just kind of lazy, and I'd rather have them spend some time thinking of something more creative or more indicative of what the story is going to be. I know I would appreciate that more. Schnepp? Uh, Batman versus Superman Triumphant. Uh, oh. Superman versus Batman Forever. Batman <laughs> versus Superman The Quest for Peace. <laughs> you know what? I, it, Superman versus Batman. They could just, I don't know what they're going to eventually call it. Um, the Dark Knight versus the Man of Steel, kids having fun, breakfast part seven, just <laughs> having some Cheerios. Uh, you know, I really Batman versus Superman is fine. Superman versus Batman. All I care about is that it's awesome, that the movie itself is great. I mean, I'm going to see it. I kind of agree with Aaron that they're rushing Batman in. I would have much rather seen just Man of Steel 2 with just Superman, develop that character a little bit more, throw Brainiac mm-hmm. in there, get Lex Luthor going. Uh, there's an entire world there that we don't need Bruce Wayne and Batman in. But since they've already announced it and it is happening, then I'm just going to go with Rocket with Batman versus Superman or Superman. Versus, I don't care what it's called. I just want it to be really good. So, see, I'm going to differ with you on both of this. I don't think they're rushing this in the least. I, I, I think, you know, rushing it would have been doing this movie 20 years ago, but today, nah, this isn't rushing it. I mean, think of it this way: um, when Um, let's say Star Trek, Wrath of Khan came out, the original, okay? You could say bringing in Khan is rushing it. Well, I mean, that was a movie that introduced Khan, brought him into the movie, developed him, made him a fearful villain, and then ultimately his defeat by the end of that same movie. It was all done in one film. Um, When we look, and so when we're looking at Man of Steel, I mean, 
Man of Steel had his movie. He did great in it. And I think this is a great time to introduce Batman. I mean, I really don't see... I'm going to go the opposite of you. I would think would delaying it would just be a pointless waste of time. I, I really don't see why you can't introduce Batman, bring him in, and develop Lex Luthor on the side, start to introduce him and what he's going to do. Look, Avengers had eight key, had eight main characters. Mm-hmm. Eight of them. Um, Star Trek has like a cast of seven or eight people that are all significant players in it. Right. You can have Man of Steel. You can bring in Batman, especially if they're going to go with that rumor that we talked about on AMC Movie Talk yesterday about how he's... Batman is not going to be a new superhero. He's going to be in his 40s. He's going to be a seasoned warrior. He's going to be at this a long time. So we don't need a 45-minute drudged out, you know, uh, origin story. So you can do all that and develop other characters at the same time. And you can do that all in the context of one film. So I I think this is a great time for it. I don't think it's rushing. As far as what I think they're going to title it, I'm basing this on nothing, okay? This is all speculation. I believe when it's all said and done, this movie's going to be called Man of Steel, World's Finest. Mm. I, that's what I think they're going to call I think they're going to keep the Man of Steel. I still, th- I think their titling of this movie is going to highlight that this is a Superman film with Batman. Right. It's not a Justice League film. It's not a World's Finest film. So I have a feeling it's going to be Man of Steel, hyph- or, or semicolon, colon, World's Finest. I like that. I mean, they could just go with World's Finest, and I'd be happy with that, too. That's actually, like, that's, to me, World's Finest is better than Batman versus Superman, but, you know. Yeah, I'd be Uh, good for it, too. All right, let's move on to the next question, and the next question comes to us from Anthony. And Anthony writes, Hello, John and crew. In your previous videos, John, you talked about how Robin wouldn't really work on the big screen in a serious way. But with WB trying to establish a big DC cinematic universe, I do not think that they can ignore Batman's sidekicks for much longer as they are part of the DC universe as well. I think Robin is going to work this time because Batman is supposed to be in his late 30s to early 40s in the next film. Technically, that means Dick Grayson would be a young man at this point going into the role of Nightwing. I know the sidekicks won't be in the Man of Steel sequel, but Batman should at least make a reference to Robin in his next film to set up the next solo Batman films. What are your thoughts? Uh, Well, my thoughts haven't changed. Um, Yes, you can say Robin and the sidekicks are a part of the DC universe. Yes, so is Plastic Man. Plastic Man <laughs> is a part of the DC universe. I love Plastic Man. Oh, who doesn't <laughs> love Plastic Man? <laughs> I mean, right? Oh, I want Plastic Man DC. in Justice League. <laughs> I mean... I love Plastic Man. <laughs> but I think we can all agree it, we probably aren't going to see Plastic Man in yeah, this Jim particular too old now. cinematic universe. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. So yes, in the comic books, remember, these are not the comic books. These are the movies. In the comic books, Robin and the sidekicks have a role in the DC universe. Yes, but I don't believe they have a role in the DC cinematic universe. But I will concede this, that with the concept of them starting Batman as a 40-ish year old guy who's been at the war for a long time, I'll concede this point. It does ever so slightly open a small crack in the door that perhaps foregoing Robin completely, a Nightwing exists. And if you can, if they could figure out a way to bring in Nightwing, completely ignoring and just throwing out anything to do with the Robin motif and the fact that Batman is actually a child abuser who brings 13-year-old children into harm's way, uh, if you can get rid of all that and just introduce Nightwing, I, I'd say there's a possibility. But at the same time, I'd say this. Nightwing is about 25th on the priority list. You you got to get Wonder Woman in there long before you get Robin. You need to get Aquaman in there long before you get Robin. You need Martian Manhunter long before you get Robin. There's about 15 to 20 other characters that you need long before Nightwing. Um, and, and and sorry, Batman doesn't need a sidekick. The the movie cinematic universe Batman has proven in the in the Nolan universe he doesn't need a Robin. He just doesn't. So uh, I'm going to stick by my guns in this. I, I think a Robin in a look. I love Robin in the comic books. I love Robin in the animated stuff in the in the early animated stuff. 
I, this is not a diss on the Robin character, but he wouldn't work in the real in a real live action film at all. Not in this cinematic universe. So I'm sticking by my guns in that. Schnepp, what do you think? I believe that Robin should never be in the movie cinema. <laughs> Ever. Where do you get this I don't, stuff? I don't think. Uh, I think I'm going to stick with our, our conversation from a couple weeks ago. No Robin in the movies. No Teen Titans. That works as a cartoon. I just think. It, or just make it as a CW TV show, Teen Titans. Get Nightwing in there, have Robin jumping around, put Damien in there. You know, get all the five different Robins jumping around having fun. They could all have lunch. <laughs> I just don't, it's not going to fit. I'd rather see Superman and Batman. He doesn't need a sidekick, and he doesn't need to reference a sidekick either. I think it is weird. I agree. Aaron, well, what do you think? My 13-year-old Ward is off at school. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure he's getting bullets shot at him tonight. You know? <laughs> Aaron, what are your thoughts on, on having a Robin or a Nightwing in the cinematic universe? Well, I mean, we've seen Robin and Batman before. Uh, a lot of people didn't like that. And I have to say that the, the whole Dick Grayson to Robin to Nightwing, this, that's a whole story in and of itself. And I think if they want to do that, it could be an origin film or it could be something else independently. Um, whether or not they want to incorporate that character or what stage of that story they want to bring him in, uh, I mean, I think it requires a lot of explaining, and they can either work on that independently or just drop him in somewhere. But either way, I think it'd be difficult to find a way to really incorporate him in a way that would be w well done. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here and offend some people, um, but Robin, Robin is is a character for children. Robin is a character for children, and that's why. When you're on the Toon Network and CW, you see those Ro Robin in, in his yeah. little Teen Titan cartoons that are for seven-year-olds. Yeah. For seven-year-olds. And if, you know, if they want to make an animated film for seven-year-olds, I'm totally fine. Grown-ups watch Batman. I can't believe I said that. Grown-ups. <laughs> somehow I agree with you. <laughs> Grown-ups yeah. watch I see what you're saying. Batman. Children want Robin. So... <laughs> Is my mother can hear me now. Grown-ups watch Batman. <laughs> Is it a shock? I never got laid a lot as a kid. Okay, anyway, <laughs> let's move on to the next topic. And the next question comes to us from Jacob Van Houten, who writes, Hey, guys, I have been watching the show for a long time. You and I both agree that Christopher Nolan should have won Best Director at the Oscars for Inception. Actually, Jacob, I don't agree with that. I don't think he should have won. But I do think he should have been nominated, at least, which he wasn't. Anyway, but with his new film coming out, do you think this could be his Oscar domination film? Talking about Interstellar. With the cast of Anne Hathaway, Jessica Chastain, Matthew McConaughey, Casey Affleck, Mackenzie Foy, Michael Caine, John Lithgow, Ellen Bernstein, Topher Grace, and Wes Bentley, and the film coming out in a November? This could not only, this is not only a stellar cast, but it's coming out during the Oscar movie buzz season. Could this be the film that gets Christopher Nolan some Oscar buzz? Um, I'll, I'll talk of this one first. Yeah. Yeah, it really could. I mean, we haven't seen the film, so we, we don't know. I mean, Interstellar could suck. There's a possibility that the Christopher Nolan film Interstellar could suck. But even though I have some issues with Dark Knight Rises, Christopher Nolan has yet to make a movie that sucked. Almost all of them are completely brilliant. This cast is unbelievable. Uh, I love the inclusion of Matthew McConaughey in it, by the way. Um, you have some of the world's best actors and actresses in there with a really cool sci sounding twisty sci-fi story. But... Uh, but let's not get ahead of ourselves because we really don't know anything about the movie yet. But yeah, if you're going to say, hey, just based on nothing, but the fact that it's Christopher Nolan with this cast aiming for a November release, it sounds to me like, number one, it could be an Oscar contender. And number two, the studio believes it could be an Oscar contender. And that's always a good sign. So I, if I had to put money on it right now before seeing the movie... I'd say, yeah, this is the this year we're going to see uh, Christopher Nolan get nominated for Academy Award for directing. Shinap, what do you think? Uh, it's just too early to tell. I mean, I actually have to see the movie before I can. I mean, I think the question is very leading, saying that the, the person who asked the question, Van, Hout, Van Houten, Van Houten, wants, thought that Inception should have won. I definitely don't think Inception should have won an Oscar. Uh, 
So I don't, I can't possibly think just because it has a great cast. I've seen tons of movies that have amazing cast that blew hard. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, you know, but Christopher Nolan is a great filmmaker. So I'm sure the movie itself is going to be really fun to watch. I really loved Inception. Was it an Oscar winning film to me? No. But was it a great film to watch and see it again? Yes. So I'm sure Interstellar will be in the same vein for me. But once again, until I actually see it, I can't make any kind of, well, it should get the Oscar nomination just because it's Christopher Nolan. I can't do it. So, What do you think, Aaron? Um, well, I disagree with you guys a little bit um, because I don't have to see it. I already know if Topher Grace is in it. That's just <laughs> gold. <laughs> if Topher gold. Grace is there. <laughs> Does anyone else feel like his name should have been like the last on the list? <laughs> I thought you were going like, to say all first. All these amazing actors. Oh, and Topher Grace. Uh, just kidding, Topher, if you're watching. You're, you're great. Um, but I do have to say <laughs> that I feel... Okay, great cast. Jessica Chastain is kind of on fire right now. She can do no wrong, in my opinion. Um, I, I think even just having her name attached is... I think we're pretty much guaranteed to see a little bit of Oscar buzz there. But again, I don't know much about the film because we haven't seen anything about it yet. But you can't disagree that um, this cast is stacked. So that's always a good thing when it comes to the Academy Awards. All right, and let us go now to the final question of the day. And our last question today comes to us from Joshua Harold, who writes, Hi, John, love the show. I was wondering, in the new Star Wars movies, can we expect to see any actors from any of the J.J. Abrams TV series in the movie? You know what, Joshua, that's not, um, that's not a far out there question. Um, at all. I mean, especially when you run down, you look at the number of shows that J.J. Abrams has had a hand in and how many of those a actors are still kicking around and have a really good career going. I'd say that the chances are pretty good and I have no problem with that and here's why. I say, I've always said on a set, now, Schnepp, I haven't directed nearly as much as you have, but I've always thought as a director that on set, the most important thing going on on a set is the chemistry between the director and the actor and how the director can get certain things and, and how the director can know how to get a certain performance out of an actor and get the best out of them at any particular time. And to have history is nothing but a benefit. I mean, I think that's why we've seen guys like Scorsese always worked with De Niro and now always works with Leonardo DiCaprio. I think that's why you see um, Edward Scissorhands' boy uh, uh, Tim, uh, Tim, Depp. Tim Burton, Tim Burton. <laughs> wanting to work with Johnny Depp. I think Definitely. that's why you see a lot of these actors, or that why in a modern thing, you got Neil Blomkamp likes to work with Charlotte Copley. Or Christopher I, Nolan, Michael Caine. In everything. Yeah. <laughs> in everything. And Anne Hathaway now. And he went back to Anne Hathaway for Interstellar, right? Yep. So, I mean, I number one, I think there's so much stuff. I think J.J. has shown that he likes to use people he's worked with before. And I think it's a positive thing as long as the casting is right. Yeah. I think it's a positive thing for a director to take an actor that he has history with and he knows and he knows how to get the best out of them. I'm okay with it, Aaron. Do you think we could see some uh, Lost or uh, Felicity or uh, Alias cast members showing up in Star Wars? Absolutely. I think so. I think you, you see that a lot happen in Hollywood, so I would not be surprised at all. And I really want to see more Josh Holly, Holloway. And I, I would love to see him in a Star Wars role. Speaking, it's funny, because speaking of Josh Holloway, I just saw him um, last night. Oh, you night. did? Oh, yeah. I, I was at the screening for, the press screening for that new Liam Hemsworth, Harrison Ford film. Um, Paranoia. Paranoia. And uh, he plays an FBI agent. I think he's got three scenes, but he's in the trailer. I think, but I think he's got like three scenes in the movie. It's like, oh yeah, that dude from Lost. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, people are talking about him for a Batman role possibility, but I, I don't see that happening. So maybe it'll free him up for some Star Wars action. Yeah, but wouldn't wouldn't happen. But I wouldn't mind seeing him in a smaller supporting role in Star Wars. Anyway, Schnapp, how do you see this? Uh, he, actually, speaking of him as Batman, then he could have all these like funny th sayings for listen blue boy he'd have all the he'd come with nicknames <laughs> for man of steel soups come here for a second you know Every five seconds yo chippy get over here yo scrimble blue yo cape yo capes get over here um, where's your underwear you know that would just be his batman what if jj abrams brings in some star trek characters like Chris Pine? um 
No, I think, you know, when, when you're directing, you develop a language with your actors, and there's a comfort zone, and you know what you can bring. The, you know when to bring them back down if they're going over 100%, if they're overacting a scene. I mean, the director's there to really help the actor handle the scenes when, if, especially if you're shooting out of order, out of continuity, you're their life support. And, you know, the, when, you, when you develop a rapport with an actor or actress, I think it's great to keep working with the same people. It's amazing. So I, I seriously hope anybody he had a great rapport with that he brings on because it only helps Star Wars. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think this is, is, uh, just bodes well if he does. But once again, the most important thing is going to be finding the right fit like don't just put for instance hallway don't just put him in there for the sake of putting him in there (laughs) find a role for him that is actually hey yeah this makes sense this is a good fit and then all the things being equal go with the guy that you worked with before so i'm totally good with that yeah well all right folks we've uh crossed the half hour mark that will do it for us for this installment of amc mailbag here on this very casual weekend we do the show a lot more casually than we do other stuff i want to thank first of all the lovely miss aaron darling aaron where can people find you online if they want to find you at Twitter, I'm at Aaron A. Darling. YouTube, Aaron Ashley D. And Facebook, Aaron Darling fan page. The one and the only Mr. John Schnepp. A quick, John, 30 no. seconds or less. What's the status right now of the death of Superman Lives? Uh, the status is going really great. We just interviewed Grant Morrison, who was just the knockout interview so far, above and beyond. Like, I mean, Wesley Strick and him are the, the best interview so far. It's just as far as information and amazing storytelling prowess and. I mean, wait till you see the things that Grant Morrison said. Wait, wait till you see and hear them. Because it kind of goes with the documentary where I'm doing kind of a narrative as well of the, like, kind of the history of Superman. So, man, that was the be- one of the best interviews. So it's really moving along great. Uh, good news as far as some of the recreation scenes. I've, uh, I've landed some, uh, some pretty am- amazing news for special effects. So, so even though I didn't reach the stretch goal, I think I'm going to be having some pretty amazing. What? Is that a giant hand? Bring back the hand! Bring the hand back! (laughs) Halt! That's it for me. I can't say anymore. Robocop's going to shoot me. You can follow follow me at Twitter, at John Schnepp, and also Instagram. And uh, you can follow me on uh, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, all at John Campia. So that'll do it for us, folks. Um, We will have another show tomorrow. I think tomorrow's show is just going to be me. And I think I might even try to make it like an hour long. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But thanks a lot for joining us, folks. Hey, listen, if you like this show... Do us a favor and click the thumbs up button. That's just a great way for us to see that people are liking the show. But also click on the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It'll keep you up to date on everything going on in the world of movie news, including our daily AMC Movie Talk Show and this weekend AMC Mailbag Show. So thanks again for joining us. My name's John Campia, and until next time, bye-bye.